What's up, tennis fans? Happy holidays. I'm Lauren Lynch, and this is Tennis Now, your source for the latest tennis news now. Lots of juicy tennis and gossip occurred this week. Charity matches, private weddings, and the Odesnik doping scandal continues. Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal faced off for a good cause twice this week to raise money for their respective charities that support underprivileged children. As many predicted, Roger won in front of his home crowd in Zurich, giving Rafa the first set as a present, of course, like he promised in their funny promo before the matches began. 4-6-6-3-6-3. Nadal won his match in Madrid, 7-6-4-6-6-1. In total, the world number one and number two collected over $5 million to support children. Nadal said, I'm lucky enough to be able to do what I love to do, which is play tennis. But at the same time, through my foundation, I get the opportunity to help hundreds of kids who are not as lucky. Both wore their decadent watches, Roger in his shiny Rolex and Nadal in his 525,000 Richard Mill watch. Roger picked up Rafa before the match in Zurich in a new Mercedes and they flew to Madrid in a private plane. Must be nice. The next chance fans will have the chance to see the two duel off is at the 2011 Qatar Exxon Mobil Open in Doha beginning January 3rd. My question for you is, how many times in 2011 will the two trade off the number one ranking? Supposedly, there were wedding bells unheard. Apparent wedding and engagement rings were both firmly in place on Anna Kornikova's ring finger when she and Enrique Iglesias left Beverly Hills restaurant Medeo. Wedding rumors were first sparked when Anna wore a huge yellow diamond ring on her engagement finger, but Enrique says nuptials are not of interest to him. A lot of people think that I'm against marriage, but you can be happy with someone without being married. However, sources say that they have privately gotten married. They have had a very small private wedding. Contrary to their characteristics, they didn't want to have a whole bunch of media watching and tabloids there. So they kept it small to just their family and closest friends. Moving on, Wayne Odesnik was sentenced to a two-year ban from the International Tennis Federation for attempting to bring to Australia and possessing eight vials containing six milligrams of HDH, human growth hormone. However, those two years were cut in half and he can begin to play in a few days on December 29th. How did this happen? Well, despite possessing the illegal performance enhancer, he denied using it and no evidence was found that he did use it. Keep in mind, if he never used it, is it possible that he was bringing the drug for another player? The ban was lifted because Odesnik was helpful to and cooperative with the ITF's anti-doping program. The former world number 114 is allowed to compete again beginning December 29, 2010. It was not announced about the manner in which he helped. No one quite knows what that means, but some think it is because he has provided information and snitched about other players. When asked about the incident in spring, Andy Roddick had no sympathy for countryman Wayne. That's just plain cheating, and they should throw him out of tennis. There was just no room for it. I was shocked, I was surprised. You know, we don't need stories like that. I know that's the minority. If that's the case, I have zero sympathy. Check out Tennis Now's interview with Odesnik from this spring by clicking on the link below in the info section. What are your thoughts on this incident? Is Odesnik a tattletale for tennis dopers? Well, that wraps up for today, tennis fans. Be sure to subscribe to the Tennis Now YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All of us at Tennis Now want to wish you a happy holidays and a great new year. I'm Lauren Lynch, and this is Tennis Now. See you next week.